Well, I think it's important to understand that we were actually more prepared for a coronavirus pandemic than we are for most potential pandemics from other viral families. So in, unless we make investments in R&D, and, and that's what my organization, CEPI, is a, an organization that focuses on R&D for vaccines uh, against epidemic diseases, unless we make those investments, make them systematically and, and across the different viral families, we could be less prepared for future threats. But, but just, to, just to follow up on my point, and look, saying that the vaccination program has been a success when so many and in the millions of people have died, it, it seems almost wrong to say. But the fact of the matter is millions of lives have been saved by the speed of which vaccinations got out onto the market and the speed of which the R&D and the financing for that came forward again as well. Why are you saying specifically for coronaviruses that we were prepared, but for others we're potentially not? So, so before, before the coronavirus, before COVID emerged, we had invested in understanding how to develop vaccines against SARS, which mm -hmm. obviously is closely related, sure. and against MERS, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome virus. And we had basically cracked the code. We knew which part of the virus to target, how to manipulate that target to expose it to the immune system and produce effective vaccines. When COVID emerged, literally within 48 hours of the virus sequences being posted, Moderna and, and the NIH and the US had designed a new vaccine. And so we were able to move very rapidly to initiate the development of that vaccine. In fact, it, the last time we met in person at Davos in, in 2020, uh, my organization, CEPI, provided a contract to Moderna just 11 days after the sequences were released. And what we were providing that contract to support was actually the production of clinical trial material. That's how fast we were able to move into clinical trials. And it was all because of that prior investment in understanding how to make vaccines against coronaviruses on the mRNA technology. As you take us back in history and compare and contrast the last Davos, it does jump out to me that people were not that concerned about coronavirus then. They were concerned for the Chinese, thought it was a major issue for the mainland market, but not really for anyone else. Monkeypox, I think people are split that they think it could be a major issue. Others think, well, it's not really. How do you view monkeypox? Is it a, a big risk to, say, Western populations at this point and beyond? Well, the first thing I would say is, is this is the first time that we have gathered again in Davos since the 2020 uh, meeting, and we find ourselves facing another infectious disease threat. I, th I think that is not, um, we, we should understand what, what that signifies, which is the world is beginning to move around again, and infectious diseases are beginning to move around with us. Monkeypox is a, th this is a concerning epidemic. Monkeypox is a very different disease than COVID. It is not spread through respiratory transmission in the same way. So as a, it does not present the kind of global threat that many of us immediately recognize that COVID presented, but it does exemplify the risks that infectious diseases present in the modern world. I know there is a push to ensure that there are vaccines available within 100 days when it comes to some of the, the major threats that we face. But what sort of 100-day window are we talking about? 100 days when it arrives in a, a Western democracy or 100 days when it becomes evident in a part of the world somewhere where it's threatening a population? Well, this, is, this has been an important part of, of, of CEPI's proposed strategy for significantly reducing epidemic and pandemic risk, accelerating vaccine development. Steve, you mentioned how can, how can we say that our vaccine response was a success when you know, potentially up to 15 million people have died. I don't think we can. I think we can look at what was done in 2020 as unprecedented but insufficient. So we do have to compress those vaccine development timelines. What we're talking about when we talk about 100 days is um, 100 days from the decision to initiate vaccine development to vaccines being available for use. And that means that we have to do we have to make significant investments in preparedness before the new disease emerges if we're going to be able to execute that fast and coming back to monkeypox um, you know my my organization uh, has argued that the preparedness investments that we need to make is is to understand for other viral families in the same way that we did for coronavirus as we were discussing earlier how to develop vaccines in advance and I think monkeypox is a perfect illustration of the value of that strategy because we actually have vaccines against smallpox that were developed against a disease that doesn't even exist that we know work against monkeypox. And we have antivirals that were developed to protect against smallpox that will work against monkeypox. So we have the tools that we need 
just as this uh, epidemic, you know, has exploded. Mm. 